This is how to play my guitar arrangement of Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, the Christmas song. Uh, we're staying in in uh, keeping with the Nat King Cole version, but also I did a full cover of this song on the guitar show that I now do with the All Guitar Academy on YouTube called Another Guitar Show. Did a great jam of this with um, Thomas. I'm going to be showing you the lead, but I do want you guys to try and work out the lead as much as possible by ear. So I'll be giving you some clues of that first of all. But let me show you these chords, which almost every one of these chords can be played by memorizing three shapes, which are very easy to play. The hard thing is learning the entire sequence. Uh, we do have tab, which I will link to on my website and in the description on YouTube. Um, but essentially, we're in the key of D flat. So there's my D note at 10th fret. Uh, double dots here, so that's 12. So this is 11, 10. And we want that first finger at 9th fret, which is the last dot on uh, last single dot before the double dot. And then the middle finger and the third finger are placed uh, one fret higher than the first finger on the middle two strings. And that's our first chord shape which makes a major seven chord when I just play the thumb and pluck the middle two strings with my first two fingers. That's for a major seven chord, which is a major chord with a major seven. We're going to go for a dominant seventh <coughs> by moving the middle finger back, excuse me. Uh, so this makes that major seventh into a dominant seventh, but we still got the major third. Stay with me, the finger positions are really easy. We just need to get these three under our belt. And then the minor third um, is, is by having all the fingers at the same fret. And if I just take you through the first line. We have the major. And then we go to the 11th fret and we're all at the same fret, so that's a minor. Minor again. And then major, the middle finger and third finger are one fret higher than where the root note is. And that root note's at 14th fret. Then, on the second line, we move everything down to 4th fret. So this is, uh, this is where my 3rd fret dot is, so everything is at the 4th fret. Uh, now one extra shape here, you could just slide this down by one, which would be in keeping with the idea that I did earlier, uh, where I said we could do all of this song with three shapes. But sticking more true to the tab which we're following, we're going to go for this 7th shape, which is a C sharp or a D flat 7 I guess. Let's stick to the flats. G major 7, sliding up to 7th fret and doing a dominant 7th shape. So let me go through each of those chords again. That's the bit that you need to get down before you move any further. That is a sequence of, you know, for eight bars, and if we get that eight bars, you know that this is a song that you can take on and work more on. If you really struggle with this, I highly recommend checking out my new intermediate course, which is on the website and on the Andy Guitar app, which will help you get these kind of chords under your belt, because we have a simple introduction to jazz um, in that course, as well as you know learning all our bar chord shapes and cage shapes, so that these kind of chord shapes don't flummox you. That's the idea. So. D flat major 7, E flat minor 7, F minor 7, G flat major 7 shape, sliding back down, and then down to 4th fret, D flat 7 there, G flat major 7, sliding up. That takes us through to Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols, the next line. Back to where we started. Which was a C flat seven. So that's Yuletide carols. Being, uh, this is sixth fret. Sung by a choir. We're gonna go up to 15th fret. Folks, dressed 
dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows. Okay, so from 15th fret, which is probably where people get a bit confused because we have this new shape where we switch around the first two fingers. Folks dressed up like everything at 14th. And then from everybody knows, it's that same thing again. So getting those first eight bars down is absolutely key to this song because we're gonna be doing the same thing again. A turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the sea That was fourth fret. Season bright Tiny tops with their eyes. Everything's been the same so far, but from here, we'll find it hard to sleep tonight. Now that is why I love this way of playing these chords. There are other ways that you can play them, but when we have, you know, a fairly complex section where we do this, it's really simple because we've got two chord shapes, three positions. One, and then go for the next chord shape. Sounds like magic. Just giving you a good look at those chords. That was uh, from a 13th fret, everything at 13th fret. First two fingers back a fret. Everything at 11th fret back a fret and there. Now this would take us on to where we uh, kind of have a key change really, whether that's theoretically 100% correct, I I'll be honest, it's, it's quite an advanced theory there, but we certainly have the feel of this becoming the one chord for this section. We, so we know that Santa's on his way. If we think of this as the chorus section or kind of the B section, if we think of an A, B, A um, format or structure, we have everything at fourth fret. That's just from the verses, really. They know that Santa's on his way. A flat major seven, D flat seven. G flat major seven. That happens twice. Lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. Change. We go second fret to a B seven. We did that already. And then up to um, e, f e major seven up at twelfth fret, which is a new move. So it's quite a big move. And every mother's son is gonna spy. Second fret. 7th fret, 12th fret, to see if we're in D, if E flat 7, it's a dominant 7th shape, and then A flat 7, and then it's essentially a repetition of the second verse again, which would be... Said exactly the same as verse 2 so far. Many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. In the Nat King Cole version, it will go back to do piano solo, but it's the same chords as we've done in the verse. Do -do -do. Seventh fret, uh, twelfth fret. See friend here now. Let's go all the way to the end. And so I offer you a simple phrase. It's from one to ninety-two. Doing this quite a bit. 
thumb, first finger, middle finger, but I'm sure you knew that already, just in some of the pauses. Going down, excuse my first finger slipping off, and to end it, just doing that twice. And to fully end it, To learn the lead part to this song, I really advise you that you be aware of the three notes per string major scale because we're using some notes from it. And if you think about this as the key of D flat, that is the position that I would have you be aware of, which I filmed very recently. Uh, if it's not quite up yet, it will be soon and I will link to it from here because it's such a gateway. It's major scale, three notes per string, and we're using the uh, sort of middle octave of it. So that... Which I will uh, be sure to tab out. Um, that, if we just play the notes from it, absolutely have most of the notes from this entire song just in that one octave, that one position. Um, and if you practice that and sing the melody in your mind, you will probably get quite close to it. Uh, a couple of things I've added are a little slide. You know, so that's something to be aware of. The other thing to be aware of is there's a change on the folks uh, dressed up like Eskimos. So we have kind of a, a modulation there, I would say. So that's uh, 10 and 12 on the B string, and then uh, 11 and 13, but then we go back to, back to normal. And those two just move down to there. So really, I please, it's such a good exercise if you're at this kind of level, or if you're even interested in getting this way through this tutorial, take five minutes to just try and work it out by ear there. You've seen a couple of it played. You know, I wouldn't want to show you too much more than that. And in fact, there's already so much if you really want to work it out. But for those of you that would like it, Here's a slow playthrough of what I just played so that you can get a handle on it, perhaps tab it out for yourself. Unfortunately, I can't tab this out for copyright reasons, but let me show you what I'm playing. It's a seventh, a dominant seventh, so this is really mixolydian mode that this is using. I'm going to do that one more time. And every note is down, going to those extra notes. 
Finishing with so Let me know if you want more of this kind of stuff, more kind of harder arrangements, any other Christmas song requests that you may have. And if you struggle or want any help with that major scale or the chords that we've used in this song, my intermediate course is the place that I would recommend that you go. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave some links on the screen now.